Hello everyone. I welcome you all to the video solutions of CBSE board examinations 2019 and we will be discussing the paper of social science set 3. As you all know in your paper question number 1 to 7 carried one mark each. So let's try to attempt these questions. We'll start with the question number 1. How had hand printing technology introduced in Japan? So students, it asks us that when hand printing technology was introduced in Japan, how was it introduced? Let's see, how was it introduced? The Buddhist missionaries from China introduced hand printing technology into Japan around 768-770 AD. So, it were the Buddhist missionaries from China who introduced hand printing technology into Japan. So, if you have written this answer, you will be able to get one mark for this answer. I hope that is clear. Now, let's see what question was given in a choice to this question. How had translation process of novels into regional languages helped to spread their popularity? So, let's see the answer here now. Translation process of novels into the regional languages bring people of different spoken languages closer. The novel produces a sense of a shared world between diverse people in a nation. So, students when novels were translated into the regional languages, it brought people from different communities together. I hope that's clear to all of you. Now, if you attempt this question this way, you will be able to get one mark for this answer right now let's move on to the next question that is question number two so now let's discuss question number two interpret the concept of liberalization in the field of economic sphere during the 19th century in europe so students the concept of liberalization is interpreted differently in different spheres but here we have to discuss the economic sphere let's see the answer now in the economic sphere, liberalism stood for the freedom of markets and the abolition of state-imposed restrictions on the movement of goods and capital. So, this is how we can answer this question which will help us in fetching one mark. Now, let's see what question was given in the choice. Interpret the contribution of French in the economic development of Mekong Delta region. Let's see the answer here now. The French began by building canals and draining lands in the Mekong Delta to increase the cultivation to bring about economic development. So, this was how the French was able to make some efforts in bringing economic development to the Mekong Delta. This is how we can answer this question. And if you answered it this way, you would be able to get one mark for this question. I hope it's clear to all of you. Now, let's start with the question number three. Now, let's start question number three. What may be a goal of landless rural laborers regarding their income? What could possibly a landless rural laborer aim for? Let's see the answer. The goal of landless rural laborers may be more days of work and better wages, quality education for the children and no social discrimination. Very important points here. More days of work, better wages, quality education for the children and no social discrimination. So, here you will be able to achieve one mark. Let's see the question which is given in the choice here. What may be a goal of prosperous farmer of Punjab? Let's see the answer. The goal of prosperous farmers from Punjab may be assured high family income through higher support prices for their crops and through hard working and cheap laborers. So here you can see that assured high family income and higher support prices, hard working and cheap laborers, these all could possibly be the goals of a prosperous farmer of Punjab. I hope that's clear. So, here you will be able to get one mark. Now, let's move on to the next question. Question number four. 
Now let's discuss question number four. How can democratic reforms be carried out by political parties? So students, as you all know, there is a great need for introduction of democratic reforms in political parties these days. Let's try to answer this. Political parties need to have strong internal democracy, avoid dynastic succession, money and muscle power, a very important issue these days, money and muscle power and offer meaningful choice to the voters which could lead to democratic reforms. This is how you can answer this question and it will help you get one mark. I hope that is clear to all of you. Now let's move on to the next question, question number five. Now let's start question number five. How is over irrigation responsible for land degradation in Punjab? Over irrigation is responsible for land degradation due to water logging which leads to increase in salinity and alkalinity in the soil. This is how you can answer this question and it will help you get one mark. Now let's quickly see what's given in the choice here. How is cement industry responsible for land degradation? Let's see how it's responsible. Excessive mining of limestone, silica and gypsum which is used as raw material for cement industry leads to land degradation. So students, the mining of limestone, silica and gypsum, no doubt they are very important raw materials for cement industry but it's leading to the land degradation and this is how we can attempt this question which will help you get one mark. I hope it's clear to all of you. Now let's move on to the next question, question number six. We'll start with question number six now. Distinguish between primary and tertiary sectors. So here we have to distinguish between primary and tertiary sector. We'll try to make a table here first of all. So we have made a table here, primary sector, tertiary sector. Let's try to differentiate them. The first point activities undertaken by directly using the natural resources. All those activities which are using the natural resources directly can be categorized under the primary sector. Activities that help in the development of primary and secondary sectors can be categorized under tertiary sector. Now the second point which can also be considered as a continuation to the first point it says it's also called agriculture and related sector. And tertiary sector is also called service sector. We will also mention the examples here where example for primary sector could be agriculture and fisheries and for tertiary sector it could be transport and communication, education, IT etc. I hope the question is clear to you. So this question will help you fetch one mark. I hope it's clear to all of you. Now let's move on to the next question, question number 7. Let's discuss question number 7 now. Explain the importance of formal sector loans in India. As you all know that formal sector loans are much more systematic as compared to the informal sector loans. Let's see what's their importance is. Importance of formal sector loans in India. The rate of interest charged is lower than that of informal sources of credit. The second point. RBI supervises their function. This is a one marker question and we have given here two points where each point carries half a mark. So if you have given these two points, you will be able to get one mark in this question. I hope it's clear. Now let's move on to the next question, question number eight. 